Hi everyone, it's Kelly here from spiritualawakeningsigns.com coming to you today with our new masterclass. So this is Awakening Your Higher Self, how to clear blocks, connect with your eternal inner wisdom, raise your consciousness and align with your true higher self. Now it sounds like something that is relatively easy to do and it can be if you know how. So we're going to cover everything that you need to know to make sure there are no blocks in your way whatsoever in really connecting with this eternal higher aspect of yourself. It's such a huge benefit in your life and in your awakening too. So let's dive right into what we're going to cover. Uh, six common blocks to connecting with your higher self and how to overcome those blocks because these are things that most people won't talk to you about. But fortunately I've been doing energy healing for about 17 plus years now so i learned all these things through working on my own awakening and with other people going through this process it's pretty special and it's a really uh really important milestone of awakening is reaching that point where you're connecting with higher self and can help you to do that today so let's dive right in now as i always say before we get started it's always good to have a, maybe a drink a cup of tea uh, some sugar if that's going to keep you going whatever it is you need because we've got quite a lot to unpack but i think you're you're really going to love it and you might even want to take a few notes as we're working throughout this well we need to talk about some of the challenges that are going to come up first because i want to lay the foundation so that you can really understand the terrain of what we're working with the problem is most people will only teach you how to do the connection part and you need to have the foundations in place for the connection part to actually be effective. So let's get into that. So like I said before, most guides will tell you to meditate, to do yoga, uh, to use mindfulness, all these different sorts of techniques to really connect with your higher self. But as I said before, the ego will block the connection every single time and you really need to tame the ego. We're not going to eradicate it. We're not going to kill the ego because people use those terms that it has a purpose and we're going to let it have its purpose and that's going to allow us to have our higher self really come shine through. So <clears throat> let's talk about some of the things that could impede your progress and your understanding and your connection with the higher self. If you're, if you're struggling to bridge the gap between your everyday self and what you would consider your higher self, your spiritual self, if there are two sides to you, um, you're not alone. This is a very common challenge in any sort of spiritual um, journey or spiritual growth, but it's, uh, it's very difficult. And I think I'd like to talk about some of the more common challenges that do tend to come up when you're trying to connect with your higher self and how to overcome them so that you've got a, a deeper, more meaningful connection with that higher part of you. So let's dive right in. Um, so the first one would be mind chatter and distractions. Now the incessant noise of our minds, the stimulus of our everyday world is just unbelievable and it can really drown out the subtleties of the communication that we get from our higher self. It's more of a whisper. You kind of need to tune in to hear it. And I've often found that resisting that, resisting the distractions, resisting the natural mind chatter that comes up really only serves to make it a lot more frustrating. It makes you feel irritable um, and it's going to block your higher self connection even further. So the best way around that is instead of fighting it, instead of making it a kind of oppositional thing, you want to accept that it is the nature of um, our environment. That's just what it is. We need to accept it. It is the nature of the mind to chatter away in the background. It does so all the time. And uh, you need to just simply realign your focus. It's about acknowledging that that is there. There's no question that that is there, but working through it. If you can practice when there are noises going on, when your mind is busy, what you're going to find is you'll become the, the, sorry, you'll become the sort of person who can connect at any time. It doesn't matter about the environmental, uh, you know, what's going on around about you. You will be able to connect in and you need that because you need to be able to connect to higher self when things are really tough. And if things are tough going on around about you, if you haven't practiced in that particular way, you're going to find it difficult to do. So that's just a little tip from um, what I've learned being an energy healer for more than 17 years now. It's, uh, it's a practice that you can use to really improve your spiritual connection. No matter what is going on in the world, it's very effective. And that's certainly what I've done for mine. So number two is self-doubt and limiting beliefs. So doubting your worthiness, your ability um, to do this, to, or the validity of it, <clears throat> the validity of your intuitive insights that you get, it can all block the connection. 
please believe me that when I say that everyone, absolutely everyone has a higher self and their the higher self is there whether you believe in it, whether you feel deserving of it, whether you think it's valid, what doesn't matter, the higher self is there. So when that is the case, when you're struggling to kind of move through the self-doubt and the, the limiting beliefs, it can be helpful to use what I would call a, a temporary external gateway to uh, allow access to your higher self without all your own stuff getting in the way and blocking the connection. <clears throat> so you can use guided meditation, you can use energy healing, even massage can help drown out that sort of inner critic that's within and allow you to uh, be guided to meet your higher self. And once you've done that, you'll find that it becomes like a pathway that you've walked so many times, you become confident at it, and then you don't need anyone else to help you do it. You can accomplish it on your own. Number three is lack of consistent practice. And nobody ever really wants to hear this one, but it, it really is true. Um, connecting with your higher self requires regular practice and dedication. It is, it is something that you need to commit to. Now, you wouldn't ignore or neglect any part of, of your body and still expect it to function at maximum capacity. And your higher self's no exception. It's exactly the same thing. So you need to choose to commit to enhancing your connection to your higher self through practice. And that might mean that you need to tailor your lifestyle just a little bit, that you need to make time for it uh, within a week or within a day or however often suits you. Number four is fear of the unknown. Now, let's be completely honest here. Venturing into the depths of your inner self can feel a bit intimidating. <laughs> you know, you don't know what you're going to find. You don't know what that terrain looks like or what you haven't experienced that yet. And it can be intimidating, especially when we're attempting to connect to ultimately a world that we don't fully understand yet. Yeah, it's something that's a, a bit different. Now, the only way to really disperse that fear and overcome it is through experience of connecting with your higher self and becoming more familiar and more comfortable with that process. So try to focus where you can less on fear and more on curiosity and, and openness. You know, you're, you're willing to discover and you're willing to uh, explore there. Number five is external influences. So societal expectations, peer pressure, um, negative environments, all of that can really cloud our clarity. It can make it difficult to focus and it's definitely going to distract us from the, you know, our spiritual growth practice. The only real way to move past this particular challenge is to set boundaries where it's possible and where it's appropriate and actively cultivate environments that support your spiritual growth. So like I said before, just tailoring your lifestyle just a little bit to incorporate this new skill that you want to develop is very, very beneficial. Number six is expectations and impatience. Now, rushing the process or expecting instant results is absolutely understandably going to lead to frustration. Instead, you want to try to accept that this is a process that is more of a gradual um, unveiling of your inner light and a rediscovery of your innate wisdom. It's a gradual thing. Um, now, that doesn't mean that you can't get benefits and results straight away because you absolutely can. But it is the type of thing that the more you do it, the better it becomes, the stronger you get at it and it all starts to really improve. Um, you want to uh, you want to really allow yourself to be in patience, the energy of surrender and allowing that connection to unfold organically because it will, it absolutely will. Number seven is not knowing how. By far the most common complaint I've had about my clients who are trying to attempt to connect to their higher selves is that like so many of us, they just don't really know how. So you go around, you're looking at all these different YouTube videos, you're looking at blog posts, you're spending hours trying to find the right answer and you just feel like you just completely don't know how to do this. But the good news is, I'm here to tell you that you actually do know how. You've just forgotten. Somewhere deep down within you, um, you've just forgotten how to access your higher self on demand. It's certainly not encouraged in this day and time that we live in. Um, however, but you can, you can utilise someone or something, that skill, to guide you to that sort of cosmic meeting place that's going to allow you to connect with your higher self. And then once you know that pathway, like I said before, it will 
forevermore be something that you can access um, immediately and at will whenever you need it. And that's very, very valuable. I can tell you that. Now, if you address these challenges head on, you can absolutely pave the way for a more profound and consistent trustworthy connection with your higher self, completely unencumbered by ego. You absolutely can do that. And I believe in you. I really do.